God is a good, good father. My, my name is David Lamb. I'm introducing Pastor Joyce, my wife. She's doing a teaching about the fathering of God. God is a good, good father. One of the things we must not be tempted to do is just live a normal life. When we become Christians and God is our father and all the resources of heaven are available to us, to live just a, a, a normal life just doesn't make sense because everything God does is supernatural, is the kingdom of heaven coming on earth. This message will take you to the next level in breakthrough. I, I recommend you listen. I recommend that uh, you stay to the end of the message and come in on the prayers in the message as well. And I pray God will transform your mind that you will know the Father and you will enjoy all the Father's resources and all the Father's love and everything that the Father wants to lavish upon you and myself, that we'll experience it all in Jesus' name. God bless you. We need to come to church expecting that God is going to do something in our lives. Let's not just turn up. This is not a ritual, a Sunday ritual. Expectancy. You need to be expectant that when you come to worship, God is going to touch your life. And when you come to hear the word of God, he's going to change and transform your life. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for Pastor Joyce. We thank you, Father God, because she has labored in your presence to bring this word to us today. And we thank you, Father, for the delivery of the word is going to bear much fruit in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the anointing that you are working out through her, Lord. And we pray, Father, against every distraction, against anything that would steal the word from our hearts right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that your kingdom will come in power through your servant today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, when I was asking the Lord what he wants me to share, and he gave me a prophecy. And um, what I'm going to share came out of a prophecy that God gave me, and I'd like to read it, uh, read out that prophecy that he gave me. And um, this is it. He said, I believe the shaking has started in the hearts of God's people in UK, in Ashford, in ACF, everything you believed in other than God is being shaken out of your lives right now. Through the shaking, people are getting serious with God as they are um, um, realizing there is no hope except in God. Everything you consider as natural or cultural, sorry, everything that you consider is cultural norms are about to shift. And um, don't hang on to it. Let go of it. When you let go, God will renew your mind and give you new mindsets. He would, he would not do it until you cry out to God, asking him to bring this new shift in your life. And in the, in the new mindsets, there is freedom, there is an ease, there is no struggle, because you are trusting God. You will say to yourself, why can't, why didn't, I cry out to God earlier, and God says, my sons and my daughters, this is my time, and this is your, my time for you, and this is your hour for freedom. And I want to release you into my presence in trusting me with all of your heart, trusting me is not just saying, I trust, but believing that trust and working it out in your life. It comes from knowing 
who um, it comes from knowing me intimately and it will be worked out in your life, you would be indeed be transformed. Don't be left out of this amazing transformation I am about to bring in your midst. I also saw a picture after what God gave me. I saw a picture of Christians running to God, being transformed, their minds and lives, in their minds and lives, they were transformed and experiencing Jesus in signs and wonders from heaven. Change lives forever, happy and rejoicing in God. Praise the Lord. You know, when, I, when God gave me that, I was thinking, wow, God, you know, you are a good God. You are concerned for each one of us, not just one or two people, but every one of us. And he has good things in store for us. And if we are wholehearted in obeying him, he will make sure, you know, there are good things coming your way. Do you know that we all have an assignment that God has given us individually and corporately? Do you want to know what your assignment is? Well, you know, corporately, ACF family has an apostolic assignment. You know, you would have heard Pastor David speak last week and he explained about the apostolic and um, well we have the same spirit same holy spirit and uh, i have a question for you what is an what is the assignment think about it what is the assignment that god has got for us as a church corporately as an apostolic church you know, our assignment is to establish the culture of heaven on earth. Okay, so let's think it through. What is heaven like? So if we are going to bring heaven to earth, we need to know what is heaven like. Yes, in heaven there is love, there is joy, there is peace, there is happiness. No violence, no crying. Um, there is no strife. You know, there is the supernatural. Those who are in heaven experience healed bodies. You know, there are so many things in heaven. They are all good things. You can think glory. You can think all the, you know, God's glory is in heaven. And we can bring that God's glory here on earth. And you do, you agree with me? Yes? Okay. Actually, we have been given the power by God to bring heaven on earth. You know, I think that is a privilege that we have been given to, has, that has been given to us by God. And we are on the earth to change the circumstances bring transformation and reformation through love and servanthood. In um, Genesis 1 verse 28, we read that we, ha we have you know, an assignment to bring form and order from chaos. Okay? And we are to be like Jesus because that's what Jesus did. He brought form and order into chaos. From chaos, he brought form and order. And we are to be like Jesus. So God's method is to use people to do the impossible. That is what God wants to do. We all know God does the impossible, don't we? And... Um, he wants to partner with us to do the impossible. You know, let's not leave God out of our lives. Let's work with him. You know, God doesn't 
um, anoint buildings or methods or structures. Rather, he anoints his sons and daughters to do the impossible. When he, when he wants to change the, um, a nation or city, he calls someone and gives him or her an impossible dream and, and an assignment. You know, why? Why does he do that? Because he wants to be involved in the impossible. You know, we can't do it without God, the impossible. You know, in, in the Bible, we have examples like Abraham, Mary, Paul, and many others. And we can follow their examples. They did the impossible, you know, if you think through all these uh, different characters, they did the impossible, and they couldn't do it unless they trusted God. So we need to trust God to do the impossible. The church is called to live with goals and dreams that ascends generations, ascend time, um, a people who live and see the bigger picture, not just tunnel vision, but a bigger picture. You know, our job is to uh, represent Jesus in the marketplace and in the communities that we live in. So we have heard this many times in church, haven't we? You know, Jesus has empowered us to change our communities instead of simply living in them. Yes, we are called to represent Jesus. You know, it is not just going and telling someone about Jesus or even ministering to somebody or someone, you know. Although these are good things, all right? I'm not knocking it. They are good things. It is your lifestyle that God wants to change. It's our lifestyle. You know, our lifestyle could, would speak volumes to people out there. You know, so church, we need to get this. Um, this is what the Bible says. You know, God has already given us everything we need through Jesus, hasn't he? He's given us everything we need, you know, in G through Jesus. We have it all inside. Do you believe this? Because that's the Bible, and that's what the Bible says. It is inside of you, inside of me, and this power in me, in us, is what acts explodes within us. You know, if, if you believe the Bible and know this is true, you will be living it. It disturbs me that so many Christians in our land, their Christianity is primarily church on Sunday. And that's very sad. You know, this is not God's uh, intention. You know, church has a great plan, okay? And meetings have a great part to play in what we, we have been called to do. But God has got something bigger than that. So let me try and explain it through an example. You know, when we, when Pastor David, ooh, <laughs> when Pastor David and I were newly married, we lived in a community house in St. Mark's Church in the Oval in London. And I lived and worked in this community home. The idea was that I would cook in this community home and they would let Pastor David and I live free in that home. So Pastor David also 
had a job. He was um, nursing in a, in a care home in Clapham. And we lived within Pastor David's salary, you know, which wasn't much. We, we, prayed our, our, we paid our bills and uh, had hardly anything left to enjoy with. And we never went out to eat because we didn't have the money. Okay? So when we were at this stage, God challenged us. You know, he asked us, why are you living like you don't have a heavenly father? You are living like I don't own the cattle on a thousand hills. Because the Bible says that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You are living like you don't have me in your hearts. We believed all these things, but it wasn't our lifestyle. You know, what shook, what God told us really shook the core of our hearts. And we were thinking, wow, God, this is true. We have not, we know about it, but we are not living it. And what he was trying to tell us was that we don't have to live like that. Like we don't have enough money to do this, do that, and we lived within our salary. And God was saying, why don't you trust me? Our Heavenly Father owns everything in the world. You know, people can have it, but he's the one who owns it. He can tell somebody, oh, here, give, um, you know, 50 pounds to so and so. He will tell. You know, he's in control of everything in the world. You know, he can provide the money for what we, we can't afford. And that goes to all of us. You know, we say with our mouths, Yes, God can provide. You know, we just say it with our mouth. But we don't live what we believe. So you and I need to live it. You know, this is what non-Christians see and are attracted to. When the non-Christians see you living it, they would want to know that God who, live, who provides for you and who lives in you. You know, they can see that it is true and not just words. Oh, God will provide and then we're living in poverty. You know, people out there are looking for the truth, guys. You know, God, really, people out there are really, really looking for the truth and they are hoping that we will succeed because then there is a truth. So we as Christians, we can do this because God's given us everything and we just sit with it, come on Sunday, sit down, go back, not letting it, you know, God out. You know, it is the same to, to do with healing, same to do it, you know, if you need many things in your life, you know, if you need healing, don't stay without being healed, without receiving your healing. You know, push through until you are healed. And, you know, I, the other day, you know, I had a, a gum infection in my gums. And when I returned from South Africa, I had this infection. And um, there was a preaching and about healing and all. And um, we were asked to stand up, anybody who needs healing. So I stood up. And um, because in the week after I came back from South Africa, I had been praying. I have been praying for, you know, all the time, telling God, heal me. And receiving my healing and, 
you know, doing all kinds of things and confessing and everything. It wasn't happening. So when I came to church on that day, on, on that Sunday, you know, God, because if you're not healed, do you settle for it? You know, like I wasn't healed. I was praying. I was doing everything I knew. It wasn't getting healed. What would you do? Would you just settle with it? Oh, okay, I'm not going to be healed. I don't. You know, <laughs> I want to uh, reach out for the impossible and work with God because God wants to bring the impossible. When I went to the service that Sunday morning, you know, I was experiencing a lot of pain on my gums and all over my head, my neck, and it was terrible. And I stood up for prayer. And uh, Pastor Akin and Pastor Rachel prayed for me. And the impossible happened. You know, the pain left me immediately. Hallelujah. It's amazing. Because when we stand up, God will do the impossible. We work together as partners. Some of us go home after service with our sick bodies. Oh, it didn't happen. Oh, it never happened. The other day I stood up and they just sat and went back sick. You need to push through. You know, in every area of our life, ask yourself, what am I believing? Not only healing, finances, but everything. You know, what are you believing? How do you get to the place where we are trusting God? We need to get to know God intimately. You know, that is the key. When we get to know God intimately. How do you get to know God? It's through the word of God. That is the main thing, through the word of God. Because God's word is so powerful and he has put so many things in there that we can live full, abundant life. You know, through reading about God's character itself draws us to God, to know God is a true God, you know, and you experience him. When you are reading his word, do you believe it? Or do you just read it because you just got to read it? You know, do you live it in your life? You know, I and seven ladies from ACF are attending the School of Supernatural in Eastgate. And at the, at the last um, class we attended, during the praise and worship, we were singing and repeating this phrase, Can't I have more of you? This was the, the, the song, and the phrase was, can't I have more of you? And we were singing it over and over again for a long period, you know, and we were in the, in the tangible presence of God at, the, at this point, you know, at that point when we were singing it. So when the worship leader said, let us re reverse it, God is saying to each one of us, can't I have more of you? You know, I got so overwhelmed. You know, you got to be real in your heart. I got so overwhelmed to know God, you know, God singing to me, you know, can't I have more of you? God was singing to me. And uh, at this point, these things hit my thoughts. Who was I that God is asking, can't I have more of you? That really blew me, you know. I just got shaken up. And straight away, I heard God speak to me. And he said, I enjoy you. I desire you. I love you. You are my princess. Can I have, can't I have more of you? And wow, you know, that was it. 
the, you know, the hormones, endorphins, were released into my body, and I started laughing. God was enjoying me. I was filled with joy. Remember once I talked about the endorphins? You know, these are hormones that get released when we get happy, we get excited. And these hormones got released inside me. And um, at that moment, the endorphins were released on me and Teresa, who was standing next to me. And we were, you know, enjoying the Lord with laughter. Teresa was swaying all over the place. She was falling all over the place. And she was giggling, you know. And when God makes us laugh, he, um, we get healed inside when we laugh. It's not that just for fun, you just laugh. But when we really, when God touches you and you laugh, God heals us inside. It is amazing. All of us need healing. I need healing. I need more of it. You know, I had a dose of it again on Friday at the church prayer meeting uh, that Pastor Ian led. And that was an intimate time with me and God. You know, our, as our, our assignment is to be involved in the impossible. You know, we can't, you know, God does the impossible. <laughs> if we live like, like, if we live within your income, there is nothing impossible in that. Nothing impossible. It's mundane, it's same every day. Is there? Do you think? Is there any, anything impossible when we just live within our income and not stretch? Nothing is, in, you know, it's no good. <laughs> it doesn't happen. So, Pastor David and I, we were challenged. God will always challenge us to do the impossible in our lives. I know God is challenging a few of you right now. You know, are you, are you breaking through the limits? You know, when you are breaking, you will be in the realm of the impossible. You know, in the realm of the impossible, there are miracles, signs, and wonders. You know, you know, because you took the challenge, he took, because we took the challenge on our first time many years ago, that we have gone further. We have to start somewhere. If you don't, you'll never get there. And, you know, we need to be expressing God in that way in our lives. If we are not, you know, when, when the time comes, when the people we need to win... You know, we, we won't be ready. Then we'll be start trying to sort things out. We need to start now. You know, we have experienced transportation. You know, um, seen money, uh, food increase. Even money came when we needed it most. We have been, we have seen homes, flats, given to us by God and things we needed given to us, you know, and, um, you know, seeing healings in, in our bodies or of, um, in our bodies many times. And, uh, oh, there's so much, you know, there is so much that God's done that it, I can't keep you here because it'll never end. So the first challenge we took was to trust God to meet our needs. Pastor David decided that we will never say we can't afford it from that time onwards 
because we believed it. So you don't tell. We tell what the Bible says. You know? So believe me, you know, by living in this way, you will never be bored in life. It's exciting because we are experiencing what God is going to do next. You know, we are expecting it. God is going to do something next. Like, you know, what is he going to do? He is going to do it, but what, what is he going to do? You know, did you know the realm of miracles, signs and wonders and supernatural only comes from God? You know, we can't manufacture it. That is why we need to know God intimately. Transformation comes from intimacy with God. When we are intimate with God, we can believe the impossible. We actually experience God. Then, then when we meet non-Christians, they, they see and hear us, and they know this is true, this is real. You know, it's, their people are not just saying it, but it's real, they are living it. People will want, want that God that is inside of you. You know, we sometimes stay at our limits because we feel we have to produce the money um, for our families. It becomes all about me and not about God. God is left out. You are doing it in your own strength and what you and what you can what you can do, you are doing it in your own strength. That's when you get on on the rat race, you know, of doing several jobs and working long hours to meet ends. My question is, where is God in it? You know, think about it. Where is God in it? In this country, people are self-sufficient. They don't need anyone telling them what to do or how to do it. You know, and we all come under that. And it, it has, you know, spilled over into the Christian churches too. And if God is not involved in your directions and you don't know don't look to God to direct every step of your way you are self-sufficient you think you can do it without God you know this this comes when you are growing up went through some bad experiences and you may have a father just like mine, who did not provide for the family. So when you grew up, you made, up, made a decision that you were not going, going to be like your father. And you become self-sufficient. You want to do everything that your family will live in the best. You know, without God, you know, you say, I can do this. You know, they struggle and strive to meet ends. You lose your joy and grace. We need grace to go to work. You know, you lose your joy and grace. Everything is work, work, work. Where is God in this? You know, we need to have a focus in life. If we don't, we will lose our energy and resources. You know, there won't be grace in what we do. So let me, let me just read a scripture, Ephesians 2, verse 4. Ephesians 2, verse 4. It says, But God is rich in his mercy and his great love. So whatever we fail, Wherever we fail, whatever we have done, God is rich, abundantly, extravagant, 
rich in mercy. A lot of people think God's um, you know, waiting to get them. You know, but no, God is rich in mercy and immense love. Remember, he, is, he loved you even when you were dead and, in, and trespassed in sin. Cut off from God, do it, going on your own, doing your own thing. You know, then he quickened us, didn't he? He quickened us and made us alive in Christ Jesus and has risen us up to sit on the, sit or to live and to, um, and to engage life in a spiritual world. What an amazing thing, you know, yet the majority of Christians don't understand how to engage in the spiritual world and bring heaven to earth. That's what God intends we do, okay? So we need to learn how to bring heaven to earth. Let me give you an example. Some of you would remember Lisa. She was an uh, addict. Uh, she was addicted to uh, drugs and alcohol and came through to know Jesus as a savior in ACF. And many of you have worked through with Lisa in the past. I know some of the people here, you worked through with Lisa in the past. So she fell in love with a guy called Richie, who was also a drug addict and became a Christian. And they told us that they would like to get married in ACF. And that time, we had just moved to this building. And they wanted to be the first ones to get married in this new building. And months had passed by, and I asked Lisa, when is this wedding going to be? And um, to this question, she answered and said that we don't have 10,000 pounds or 20,000 pounds. So I, I was prompted by the Holy Spirit to you know, ask her, why do you need all that money to get married? So she said, that's what the, a wedding costs. So I told her, that's what the world would say. You know, my question is, to her was, what does God say? Have you asked God to provide? And she answered, no. So I told her, you know, did you know the Bible says God owns the cattle or a cattle on the thousand hills, and um, He owns the silver and gold. God, in the Bible says, you know, God owns the silver and gold. If He owns all that, and He cares for even the birds. Wouldn't he provide for you? And uh, she, you know, he wants to provide a wonderful wedding for you, Lisa. I was telling her. And Lisa was challenged by God. And I encourage her to write what she needs for her wedding on a piece of paper. So she wrote it, wrote down all what she needs for her wedding. She wrote down all the major things the major things that she needed for her wedding. She, um, she pray, uh, so we prayed together and asked God to provide each one, naming each one, you know, and I asked her if God heard, has God heard our prayer just now when we prayed? And she said yes, 
Because every time we pray, God is hearing our prayer. And she said, yes. So she also had a scripture. And that scripture was, God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. And she was very excited when she got this scripture. Because she said, what you told, you know, it's just this scripture really speaks to me. So she had that scripture on the, uh, written out. So now I encouraged her to put, put her prayer request. We prayed through together and then I told her to slam it on the, put it on the fridge. And I encouraged her that every time she opens the fridge, she should you know, just slam the paper and say, Quote the scripture that you have, God said, thank you, Lord, that you supply all my needs according to your riches in glory. And then say, thank you, Lord, that you are going to give all the things like she, she, she wrote down. She said, thank you, Jesus, for giving me a wedding dress. Thank you for the bridal flowers. Thank you for the flower girl's dress and uh, the venue for the reception and the food at the reception. And she'd been doing this. She thanked God, you know, thanked the Lord for, for the answer several times a day because she went into the fridge to take things and every time she thanked the Lord. So she started thanking the Lord every day. So within a week, God started answering what she was believing, okay? Her, her father told her that he would buy the wedding dress and the flower girl's dress, and she came running to me. She said, you know, my father said I can, I, he's going to buy, he wants to buy the dress and for the flower girl, so I, I, I was rejoicing with her. Wow, God is so good. I was telling her, God is so good to you. He wants to provide for you. So she told me that she was in a bus one, one of the days, and someone she knows gave her, she told them that she's getting married, and they gave her loads of money in her, hand, in her hands. And um, the, one day she went to Victoria Park, and you know, there's a place where they have weddings, and um, there is this, I think it's a pub, I'm not sure what it was, what is it, but she was looking into that place in, through the window, and the people inside, they came and they said, can we help you? And she, you know, Lisa is so friendly, she began to make friends with them and told them that she's looking for a venue, and they became so good friends, and these people began to say, well, you can, you know, we can do this thing for you. We will charge you less, and they, some of the things they did, you know, didn't even charge her, you know, and she had a wonderful, she had a lovely wedding, and um, God provided for Lisa and Richie. Things like this may have happened to you. You know, the question is, are you continuing in trusting God for the impossible? Or, or, yeah, God provided that time, but, you know, yes, it's all in the past, but now God is asking, are you continuing in trusting God and in, in the impossible, for the impossible? Even now, God challenges us, you know, in God's challenge, we are going to build um, and establish the first school in um, Takana district in Lodwa. It's not that we have lots of money, but we know that's what God wants, and we have asked God, and it's God's going to provide. You know, I need, and I need more treatment from the chiropractitioner, and uh, it costs more money for the next six weeks. And what do we do? Yes, God wants to be involved in the impossible. We keep 
pushing. God loves process. You know, process is action. Okay? Keep pushing. Process is action. There is, um, there is incredible power in just continuing in simplicity, faithfulness, and diligence. You know, process is our gift to God. That is our gift to God, process. Okay? It's how we express moment by moment trust. Process is about um, focusing on the right things with clarity. It's through process and steady steps that momentum is created. So why do you think we need to ask God for renewed mindsets and experience transformation? You know, it is because our, our thinking can hinder the flow of grace. You know, it doesn't mean he has removed his grace, but our mindset is preventing its full um, manifestation. You know, it's like having a million pounds in the bank and never making any withdrawals. Unbelief prevents us making a demand on God's grace. Our God-given assignment will bring us into impossible situations. And if we don't draw on his grace and in, instead only focus upon our weakness and fragility, we won't, rea we won't realize that we carry favor, solutions, and that God, that Christ in us, we have been equipped with, many, uh, with everything needed to bring heaven to earth. Our biggest issue is not found is not found in circumstances, but in our unbelief regarding God's assignment. So we need to have a new mindset. We must resist our the we must we must resist only mindset that leaves us feeling hopeless. We must resist it. We do not allow that type of mindset to take hold of us and being powerless. And um, instead, those who trust, his, uh, trust him, his confirmation and uh, affirmation will aspire. You know, allow God to speak to you. You know, his good report. He's got a lot of good reports to tell us how he sees us. You know, that is amazing. Let me show, uh, you know, share with you his love, favor, and affection. God's words impart strength and gives you back your nerve to dream again. Trust is what we do in response to his promises in the word. Inner conviction and confidence is, pro is, pro is, is produced by God, God's word. When we read the word, we get confident. And um, this inner response leads to an uh, obedient response. He is good enough, strong enough to do what he says he will do. You know, do you believe that? I do. You know, this must be what is in our heart, trusting God. So I, 
I've uh, come to the end of my, my sharing, but I feel God wants us to listen to the, the prophecy again. So I want to read the prophecy again. Just let the Holy Spirit come on you. Just engage with God, okay? I believe the shaking has started in the hearts of God's people in UK, in Ashford, and ACF. Everything you believed in other than God is being shaken out of your life right now. Through the shaking, people are getting serious with God as they are realizing there is no hope except in God. Everything you consider as um, cultural norms are about to shift. Don't hang on to it. Let it go. Let go of it. When you let go, God will renew your mind and give you new mindsets. He would not do it until we cry out to God, asking him to bring this new shift in your life. In the new mindsets, there is freedom, there is an ease, there is no struggle because you are trusting God. You will say to yourself, why don't I cry out? Why didn't I cry out earlier? And God says, my sons and my daughters, this is your time. This is your hour. I want to release you into my presence, trusting me with all of your hearts. Trusting he is not just saying. Trusting is not just saying, I trust. But living that trust out in your life, it comes from knowing me intimately and it will be worked out in your life. You, will, you would indeed be transformed. Don't be left out of this amazing transformation I am about to bring in your midst. I also saw a picture of Christians running to God, bringing transformed, uh, being transformed in their minds and lives and experiencing Jesus in signs and wonders from heaven. Changed lives forever, happy and rejoicing in God. Okay, I just want us all to stand up, please. There are a few things I feel God wants you... Sorry. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> I went ahead of it. <laughs> I, there are a few things get, that I'm going to speak out because God gave me a few things. I think there were like about three things. And um, God wants you to stand up if that is you. Okay? The first one is um, I need you to stand up uh, I, when I call these things, you know. You know everything you believed in other than God is being shaken out of your life. If that means anything to you, please stand up. And the second one is you have decided to get serious with God in trusting God. If you can stand up, if this is what God is telling you, and how many of you would like to experience this shift that God's been talking to you about? The shift in mindsets and, and you want God to bring transformation through encounter. And God wants you to stand up. Okay. David, you want to come? Amen. This one um, is, is a very uh, interesting, adventurous one. God is a God of adventure, and God is a God of innovative creativity and excitement. Um, and I think 
we can miss all of that by the way we think sometimes. i just give an example. People wrote to me and said, how come you can enjoy so many exotic holidays? And um, I was thinking about it, and the revelation that joys have, uh, we both have, is that God is our Father, and he gives us treats on purpose, not things we necessarily deserve, not things that we have earned, and so he gives us treats on purpose. One time, um, just to give an example before we pray, but uh, we were praying, we pray, you say, Lord, where, where should we go on holiday this year? So he told us to go to, um, uh, it was Switzerland, wasn't it? And um, then when I looked at the brochures and looked at the prices, <laughs> I was thinking, wow, it's so expensive. So I said, Joyce, I don't think we can go. I think we're going to do a tent in the bottom of the garden. <laughs> and um, then the Lord, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I didn't tell you to look at the brochures. I didn't tell you to look at the brochures. I t I, I, we were to listen to his voice and then believe what he was saying. Uh, so it was Switzerland. Um, phew, sky high prices in Switzerland being expensive. Anyway, at that time, um, we, were, we were in an Anglican church. And for no apparent reason, a lady came up to us and she said, I have a chalet in Switzerland. It's... Um, uh, it's in a place called Villars, and you look out of the window and you can see Mount Blanc. She said, I felt the Lord Lady on my heart. Would you like to go and stay there um, free of charge? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> so, yeah. So, we... so this is like a pattern now in our lives about holidays. And just, <laughs> we're going to Taiwan tomorrow. Our adopted daughter, she's Chinese, and she's married a Brit, and she has four kids. Um, used to dump the twins on our bed and say, you look after I'm going out, and all that kind of stuff. So she's our adopted daughter. She wrote um, through the email recently, and she said, um, my husband and I want you to come to Taiwan fully paid, uh, come and have a holiday. So we, we've been on to be bounce on mission, 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 and now we're going on holiday, holiday, <laughs> holiday. <laughs> Amen. Never been to Taiwan. We always like to go to places we've never been, and the Lord knows that, and uh, he always seems to engineer it for us. So, but the question is, do you know God like that? Do you know God as your father? Do you know that God gives handfuls on purpose? He give, he's a generous father, or is it all a slog? Is it all just barely get along street down, you know, barely, barely get along street, as they say, down Grumble Alley? <laughs> and God's got more for us than that. Amen. Amen. Abundance. Let's lift a hand with me. Come on. And let's, let's ask God. Um, I don't even believe, listen to me very carefully, I don't believe God is telling anybody off. I believe God is saying, I just want to help you. I just want to father you, and I just want to bring you up to the next level so that you're thinking in the right way about my fatherhood. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Is there, it, there's no father that wouldn't want to promote their children and get their children fees paid for university and so on and so on. There's no father that would be challenged by, the, uh, by their children succeeding more than they succeeded. No father. Our father is like that. He just wants us to succeed and it makes him happy because then we're a credit to him and to his covenant and to his kingdom. Yes. Let's lift a hand. Let's, Father, we just come to present ourselves. We do ask, Lord, for your forgiveness. All of us, Lord, we think below our potential. We think below sometimes your character and your nature and your word. And we just say, Father, forgive us for thinking and limiting you uh, in the ways that we do. We ask you to change our mindsets. Take us on an adventure. Take us, Lord, as it were, on a renewed mind course. Take us into the supernatural realm where money is not an issue. 
Money doesn't stop us doing your will. It doesn't stop us traveling. It doesn't stop us having an exotic holiday if that's what you want for us. Nor does it stop our children having their fees paid off in university and so on. We pray you'll just change our mindset. Sweep through the house. Sweep through, Lord, our families. We decree a change occurs from today that we know you as our Father who gives handfuls on purpose and loves to provide for his children and we rebuke every spirit of unbelief, we rebuke every spirit of limitation and we decree the change is occurring in your family, in your household, with your children, with your grandparents, with your grandchildren. We decree a change occurs now in Jesus' name and that we shall reflect and we shall, we shall see the covenant of our God portrayed through God's generosity in our lives. We thank you, Father. We curse the spirit of poverty. We curse the spirit of debt. And we decree in Jesus' name, we will be debt free. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Are you finished? <laughs> Was it? Continue.